welcome back to Kill Rock Radio here on KillRockRadio.com. My name is Rocky. Back up in this motherfucker, just uh, trying to have a little conversation with y'all about all the crazy shit going on in the world of hard rock and heavy metal. On this episode of Kill Rock Radio, is the current Pantera tour a diabolical attempt by Phil Anselmo to whitewash his past? We'll examine. Also, I have actually a shitload of, uh, of different uh, listener comments and all that shit. So we're going to do an extended listener comment section and get through all that stuff. Let's go ahead and start off with this Phil Anselmo thing. Okay, so there was an op-ed piece posted to uh, Metal Hammer. You know, it's all owned by the same group or something. There's like four different sites. Anyways, the, the, most, the most popular post was from Metal Hammer, and it's an op-ed piece by, uh, by Matt Mills of Metal Hammer. It's entitled, Pantera were one of America's most important metal bands. Now they're little more than Phil Anselmo trying to whitewash his own legacy. So, of course, this is all based on the 2016 Dime Bash, where a drunken Phil Anselmo takes the stage, throws a Heil Hitler, says white power, and then is dragged the fuck off stage. I can absolutely understand someone who sees that and says, you know what? Fuck Phil Anselmo, fuck anything he's involved with. I never want to see the dude again. I completely get where you're coming from. You're not an asshole for feeling that way. It's just how you feel. So whatever, that's fine. But here's my rebuttal to the to the op-ed piece, because I got this from several people. Info at killrockradio.com is where you would send stories and shit for me to comment on. To, but to me, the initial premise is really kind of fucked. I, I'm having a tough time getting my brain around it because I don't understand how this tour being a success, which it is. So with that being the case, assuming that they're able to finish this last leg of the tour without something insane happening, what's changed really? Because in the grand scheme of things, metal's not as popular as it once was. So, okay, Pantera goes around the world and plays to sold out arenas. Everybody sings along to these songs that they already know and love. If you look at Pantera songs in and of themselves, there's, there's no racist lyrics to speak of. If you look at Phil Anselmo, you have to dig deep for anything beyond the Dime Bash. I mean, I understand the Dime Bash uh, incident in and of itself is just a gigantic blinking red, fuck a red flag. This is, you know, a red spotlight with alarms and shit. I hear you. But there's this very um, all or nothing sort of idea going on here with this op-ed piece. It, like at some point he comments like, why don't people realize that Nazis are bad? Listen, I'm right there with you. I think Nazis are fucking awful. Um, I think Nazis are pieces of shit. I'm like Captain America or Ronald McDonald. I would punch Hitler right in his stupid fucking face if I could. Assuming the tour's success, even when it's said and done, how would that whitewash the history of Phil Anselmo? Especially since literally every other fucking month, I get a story where somebody is bringing up the Dime Bash incident from 2016, which is nearly 10 fucking years ago. We're approaching a, the 10 year anniversary and I can't stop hearing about the Dime Bash every fucking second or third month. Someone brings it up. Nobody fucking cares. And then essentially it, it's like somebody will throw a temper tantrum. Why don't you fucking care? And here's the thing. I mean, this story, of course, it's written from a, 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 a negative slant. And there's been a negative slant. I feel fucking stupid having to say this over and over again. From the very beginning, when this tour was announced, there was, there was a really clear attempt to shit on this tour. Several different excuses as to why the tour was going to suck, why you shouldn't go. Uh, shit ranging from the Dime Bash incident through to, you know, Phil's voice is fucked. Uh, it's not Vinny and Dime, so it's not Pantera. All that shit. They were giving you different stories about all these different reasons why you should not fucking go to see Pantera. But everybody wanted to go any fucking ways. And so now it, it's, I mean, are, 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 are we being scolded with this? Because we still want to go see Pantera? I think the reason I'm having a tough time wrapping my mind around it is the term whitewashing. 
like, uh, you know, Thanksgiving. We just had Thanksgiving. That's a good example of whitewashing. The reality, of course, anyone who knows, knows that we put a nice face on what was it, what was essentially a genocide. Oh, here's the pilgrim and the Native American just sharing a meal. You see, cultures can come together, whatever. You know, that's, that's whitewashing. You know, the op-ed opens up, he acknowledges Pantera, their place in metal history. Here's a quote from the, uh, from the piece. This broad acceptance of Pantera's comeback would be understandable if Anselmo had spent some of the past seven years atoning for his actions, yet he seemingly hasn't. When footage of the front man's white power outburst started doing the rounds on YouTube, he both refused to apologize and drummed up frivolous excuses. So, okay, his excuses were not good enough for you. Here's the thing about excuses. Sometimes we do dumb shit and the excuse that is the truth. You may say, well, that's not good enough. But just because it's not good enough for you doesn't mean that it's not what happened. You know, in my lifetime, I've seen racism. And the thing about racists is really it's one of two things. Either they're really loud and proud about it. They're out front. They're like the dickheads with the tiki torches. They're out there, you know, or they're normal, you know, quote unquote, normal in public. And then when you get them alone, they're like, ah, oh, motherfucker. And then the, the epithets just fly. Phil is a guy who's spent most of his life touring. I mean, Dave Grohl has talked about it and shit like that, that Pantera were like the most public ass band in the backstage area. They were the ones going from trailer to trailer, getting people fucked up and shit like that. You would think with all of that, if Phil Anselmo was a guy who walked around being just like a fucking openly out in front racist, you'd think somebody would say something. And nobody has. If anything, people have come out to defend Phil Anselmo. So, okay, maybe he's not one of these out front racists. Maybe he's one of these guys who talks shit in his uh, private life. Based on what you all know about how things are in our society these days, if it comes out where somebody says, oh, this famous guy is a racist, it's never more than like a few days before people start coming out of the woodwork to say, oh, I heard this person say this. Oh, or I saw this person do that. So in the op-ed piece, they refer to Rob Flynn, lead vocalist of uh, Machine Head, who claims that he was there and claims that none of that happened, that it was not a running joke. There was no white wine power. There was no none of that shit. Then how come Doug Pinnock, lead singer of King's X, how come he backs up the story? Funny enough, just before the gig started, Doug Pinnock from King's X, a gay black man, came to say hello to me. I kissed him on the lips because A, I'm comfortable as hell with my sexuality and I don't care what people think about me sexually. He said, man, you taste good. And it was a white wine. I said, it must be that white power. Ho, ho, ho. Yeah, so that was a joke. LOL. And Doug Pinnock backs this up. He shouldn't have done it. I can't stick up for what he said. I think he was trying to be funny and controversial, but he doesn't have a racist bone in his body. I know people say, how can you do something like that as a joke? But you gotta know Phil and his sarcasm. It's not bullshit. So we know at very least the stupid white wine power shit uh, was a real thing. If you tell me on one hand, thirsty ass Rob Flynn says something, and on the other hand, Doug Pinnock, who has no fucking reason to lie, I mean, who do you believe? I believe Doug Pinnock. He didn't just happen to be backstage. Well, I, hey, I didn't hear anything. Just because you didn't hear shit doesn't mean it didn't happen. And this op-ed piece completely ignores the fact that Doug Pinnock backs the story up. Uh, Phil then says that people in the crowd heckled him about white power. Just a, two or three little hecklers. What I did was show them exactly what ugliest the ugliest possible thing I could think of at the time. This, they, they were looking for what they got. And sadly enough, I gave it to them. But the thing is, you got, yeah, I've always engaged 
my audience. And there's one point in that video that I invited them to come up on the stage, and I dared them to call me that to my face, and I'd break their jaws. So at the end of the show, when I knew everybody was getting cleared out and whatnot, <clears throat> I lost my my uh, shit, so to speak. Could I see that happening? Yes, because look at this. This guy just, it, nobody ever shuts the fuck up about him being a Nazi racist motherfucker. So I, yes, I could absolutely see some people in the crowd were fucking with him about it. That would make sense to me. Um, all I, it would also make sense to me that he added that bit to it to give further beef to his initial excuse of the white wine power thing because everybody tells him it's not good enough well also in the crowd you know what i'm saying like you start trying to beef shit up so the second half of it i don't know could have happened could have not happened i don't know what i do know is at the core of the story there seems to be truth there and if it's not good enough for you i apologize i don't fucking know what to tell you but uh if that's your only real uh proof of this man being a nazi like that's a that's a heavy thing to lay on somebody who once again at the start of this story kisses a gay black man on the mouth nazis are against black people and they're against gay people so he's breaking two major nazi ass rules when he goes and kisses Doug Pinnock on the fucking mouth. There's as much proof of Phil Anselmo being a gay dude as there is of him being a, a Nazi in the sense that you have one night where a thing happens. If you take that one thing and pull it aside and put it on the side and you said, hey, tonight I saw Phil kissing a gay dude on the mouth. I think he's gay. That would be a story you could tell. And if Phil says, no, it's just a funny thing we do to each other, you'd say that doesn't sound right. But it, it's the truth, you know? Also, Money Mills, he says that uh, if Phil had been atoning properly, well, what the fuck does he, is he supposed to do? Of course, initially, he didn't want to, he didn't want to apologize. He didn't feel he did anything wrong. People don't want to apologize. Phil is known as a stubborn dude. So I understand him initially not wanting to apologize. He eventually sees the errors of his ways. He comes out. He does this fucking weird video apology. It was ugly. It was uncalled for, and anyone who knows me and my true nature knows that I don't believe in any of that. I don't want to be part of any group. I just want, I'm an individual, and, and, I'm, and I am a thousand percent apologetic to anyone that took offense to what I said, because you should have taken offense to what I said. And... I am so sorry. And I hope you just, man, give me another chance to <laughs> just give me another chance. I love all of you. And so he's there, he's crying, he's apologizing, he's acknowledging what he did wrong and getting into why it was wrong. What, what the fuck else? I mean, do we need a public flogging? Does somebody need to like just stick their thumb up his ass on fucking closed circuit television? I mean, what would be the right amount of, an, of atonement? It's just like, it's weird. Like we have to please everyone. There has to be enough public humiliation, enough apologies for you to feel okay about listening to Pantera again. The guy came out, he apologized. If it's not good enough for you, then that's on you, dude. If everybody else uh, says, hey, listen, shit happens, I don't know, we forgive you. You don't think that's cool. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't know what to tell you. But to shake your finger at the world, like, why aren't you all as, as enraged as I am? It's just, it's, it's ridiculous. And I think that's why, even though I, I got this story sent to me by several people, I haven't heard it really catching on because how is this possibly a whitewashing if no one will let it go it would be one thing if nobody had mentioned it in years and then phil comes he has this big triumphant return people would forget about the previous shit i understand that but here we are in metal hammer which is still one of the the most popular heavy metal uh, publications where you've brought it all up you've made a complete case the time bash thing that's the most obvious thing and the the story is fucking stupid i get you when you say it's a frivolous excuse it is it's absolutely a frivolous excuse. 
Just like you have your opinion about what Phil Anselmo has said and done throughout his career, I have mine. I believe the stupid fucking story. Rob Flynn, who admits he has an ax to grind with Phil Anselmo, is literally the only dude who has said shit. Why is that? This whole I'm a racist thing is it's infuriating because it's false absolutely false and I'd like to turn around and say hey what have you done to better your community Robert if you're gonna call me out on this supposed heinous act what have you done what have you done I know what I've done uh, several people in the music world did respond to give you two sides of the argument, M. Shadows, vocalist for Avenged Sevenfold, says, I don't tend to agree with this perspective, but I respect it. The media should make us think and not be blowhards for the artists. Again, I don't agree, but I appreciate the pushback. Kadeem France of Loathe, which is a cool band, uh, says, yeah, fuck this band. If you're somebody who's sensitive to racism, triggered by images of racism, and you see a guy throwing a Heil Hitler saying white power, he's got a fucking shaved head. I get it. I get it. I understand where you're coming from. If you don't ever believe it, we're just going to have to uh, to agree to disagree. I'm really surprised this even gives Phil so much credit for being like some like diabolical, evil fucking genius that he would be figuring out this plan to whitewash his legacy. I really doubt Phil is that thought out. To me, it's as simple as this. Phil is touring stadiums, which he hasn't been able to do since Pantera. These are big fucking paychecks. This is a way for Phil to tour for a couple years straight and make enough money to essentially live the rest of his fucking life. I think it's as simple as that. I think it's as simple as a as a financial issue. And on top of it, from an artistic standpoint, this is quite honestly the only way Phil Anselmo is going to be able to tour arenas. Because on his own, they're just not that level of interest. I mean, the closest Phil got was with, with uh, his band Down. I saw them open for Metallica. They were able to play some fairly large places and... Uh, they've made some great albums and shit like that. But in reality, Pantera is the only way Phil gets to play these shows. And I think that's the main draw to him. I don't think Phil has thought that far ahead about whitewashing his legacy. I don't know what value he would get from whitewashing his legacy. Um, and on top of it, how the fuck could he do that when y'all won't let a motherfucker forget? So it's, it's just ridiculous. So uh, I'll see you guys in another few months. When another motherfucker throws a tantrum and needs to tell us how fucking vile we are for uh, for not hating Phil Anselmo and running him out in the streets. Maybe we could do one of those things where we put him in the stocks and everybody just lines up and walks up and slaps him on the ass hard. And if people want to just pit piss and shit on him in the streets like Mussolini, we do shit like that. Or maybe like some uh, we do like some Gaddafi action where we drag him through the streets and people just shove things in his ass till he's dead. Would that be enough atonement? No, in fact, we keep him alive. Death would be too good for that motherfucker. We keep him alive Saw style. And then when, he, when he's all fucked up, then we make him go out there and uh, sing Five Minutes Alone and all the other fucking Pantera hits we know and love. Would we be allowed to listen to Pantera if something like that happened? Would we get the blessing from Money Mike Mills and all the fucking people clutching their pearls about the fact that we're all just having a good fucking time watching Pantera. I think the, pre the premise is fairly ridiculous. I don't buy it clearly, but uh, to each their own, everybody can have their opinion. This is the uh, United States after all. So uh, good luck, Money Mills. We'll talk later. You know, I'm a believer in freedom of speech, whether you're joking around or not. Dude, I just got this one thing uh, in the mail that I hadn't seen this. So apparently this happened last month, but now the uh, the Austin police are taking action, which means nothing's going to get done. In Austin is the nicest, lawless place you'll ever fucking see. If you go like to 6th Street, they're, they're like little zones 
where you can just openly be violent and be a total piece of shit and the cops will be like, all right, buddy, let's break it up. And everybody's sort of allowed to go their own way. Or you could just very slowly run away from them. They don't have a lot of gumption when it comes to chasing people that have assaulted other people. Uh, so anyways, there was a show, it was a festival. I believe it was uh, the Heavy Hitters 4 Festival in Austin. Pretty much every show you go to these days, there's going to be someone dressed in some sort of fun costume or some shit. And I'm all for it. It adds to the vibe of the show. Uh, if you're the person in the costume, it's probably an easy way to make friends, maybe even, you know, meet some uh, some dudes or chicks or whatever you're into. So at this show, there was a there was a furry. This wasn't even just a motherfucker wearing a costume. This was a furry. Uh, furry for those of you who don't know that it's a lifestyle you live your life dressed up like a fucking mascot essentially like there's even furry porn like they get down and fuck like still with their stupid heads on and all that shit you are getting me rock hard uh, i've never seen furry porn but you know what now that i just said it out loud i desperately want to see some furry porn i'm gonna go watch some fucking furry porn after this i should probably edit that <laughs> that admission out anyways this furry did have a, a fucking special name and all that shit uh in fact here i'm gonna go to youtube video creator at shiokami to give you the full uh the full report on what actually happened a furry named latte was punched while attending a from joy concert i can't show you the video due to youtube's tos however in these images we can see this man here he is moshing really hard he sees Latte, makes eye contact, winds up, and hits Latte with a Mach 10 right hook. This is called crowd killing, and it is not okay. It is not proper mosh etiquette. It is assault. You went and punched a motherfucker named Latte Joy right in their fucking sweet furry face? How dare you, you rotten motherfucker? Shiokami raises a fine point. That's crowd killing. Cra dude, crowd killers are the absolute worst shit. Crowd killers are like the the negative stereotype of what people believe about motherfuckers who get into a mosh pit. The reality of a mosh pit is uh, there's fucking chicks, there's little kids, there's older people. Everyone's just jumping around and having fun. It's I mean, it's just just a fucking like a kinetic energy release. Um, and nobody's looking to hurt each other. At, at most shows I see, somebody falls down, they don't get trampled. You pick these motherfuckers up. And when the show, when the song's over, you fucking hug each other. It's like, it's normally all love in the pit. But these motherfuckers, knuckle-dragging, low-brow fuckheads, they can't stand people having fun. That's the one thing. I mean, they're, they're essentially bullies. But they cannot fucking stand to see people having a good time. If somebody starts having uh, some lighthearted fun or if some girls are in the pit, they take it personal and they make a point to run up and knock motherfuckers over, punch people in the fucking face. And it just it fucks everything up because now the crowd doesn't want to mosh anymore. Some fucking idiot's going to run up and punch him in the fucking face. I've seen this multiple times. Normally, the fucking crowd killer is a cowardly fuck who will get the fuck out immediately, as this crowd killer did. You know, I'm going to show this fuck's picture. Have you seen this, man? <laughs> if, if you've seen this motherfucker, nobody sell him weed. Nobody give him any pussy or dick, depending on what he's down with. Nobody hook him up with nothing, because he's a punk motherfucker. He punched Latte Joy in the face, broke... Latte Joy's fucking orbital bone. Uh, imagine how hard you had to hit poor fucking Latte Joy to break his orbital bone through a furry mask. Holy shit. So yes, this man must go down. People of Austin, figure it out. But yes, the cops are looking for you, motherfucker. I said nobody give him any pussy, but I think his breeding has taken care of it. This looks like an incel ass motherfucker. I mean, the motherfucker's got no neck at all. His face, you know what, the blurry picture? That's probably what that motherfucker looks like for real. Maybe he, maybe he was born like four or five months early.
shat out into a toilet. He didn't bake long enough. You had to put him back up in his mom's snatch for another three, four months. And then that's what he grew from. Almost like the ginger weed man. Has anyone seen the ginger weed man? Oh, careful, Toke. The party, the wind, the cockfighting. Ah! Hey! I finally got on the cock, Peacock, the app. You know, they have uh, Evil Bong, the Evil Bong film series. I had never seen them before. I love watching like fucked up culty type movies. I checked that out, but I didn't watch them in, in the proper order. I started with the ginger weed man. Holy shit. That is the dumbest. That is a 45 minute movie. And there's an intermission in the middle where they kill like five more minutes and it feels like it took forever. It's like, it's the dumbest fucking movie humanly possible. Anyways, this guy looks like a character out of the ginger weed man. It makes me uh, remember this one time here in Houston, uh, out at the Astro Arena. Uh, it was Pantera and there was this fucking dude, he was crowd surfing and he had, he had big fucking boots on, big combat boots, like Doc, Doc Martin style combat boots. And he's stomping while he's crowd surfing. And he kicks this poor chick right in the fucking head. And right at that moment, the Pantera pit, I will say, is one of the most disciplined in terms of like taking care of each other. Uh, people that are fucked up like that are immediately expelled. This dude got ripped off his wave, if you will. And he got the boots medium style. They drug that motherfucker out of there. You wonder why a lot of times women don't go to the shows or if they go, they stand towards the back because they're concerned that they're going to get hit. Uh, people are going to feel them up shit like that. All that shit is not fucking acceptable as fucking weird and backwards as it sounds. The mosh area should be a safe space for you to go fucking wild and shit like that. We're not trying to beat each other's ass. That's stuff that outsiders think. You know, a lot of times these crowd killers are not even fans of the bands. Like they'll just show up to any fucking show and start throwing punches and kicks and shit like that. Fuck all that, dude. I understand it's not cool to rap motherfuckers out to the cops, but now that the pictures are out here, if you see this fucking goofy, chunky, pumpkin headed fuck, you go ahead and either call the police or maybe you take it into your own hands. I don't know what that means. Maybe you have a conversation with them. I don't know. Uh, I just wanted to help that effort. And also, uh, fucking Latte Joy, goddamn, get well soon, Latte Joy. And once again, thank you, Sh Shiokami, for that, uh, that, that furry news report. All right, so anyways, I, I'm going to have a little bit of an extended listener comment section. And fuck, man, this Phil Anselmo story that we were just referring to, there's so much instant feedback. I've got like over 100 comments here. Uh, there's no way I'll be able to get to all of those, but uh, we'll probably have another extended listener feedback section next episode. But uh, in this case, let me go through all that. God damn, y'all motherfuckers. Some of y'all are racist. <laughs> uh, I've I, just scrolling through this. I've already been called a retard. Uh, I've seen several racist things said. So that's something to look forward to next episode. A, a cliffhanger for you, if you will. But anyways, in regards to everything that happened last episode, my homie Illuminati of Illuminati of, I don't fucking know, says uh, in regards to Jay Weinberg being fired from Slipknot, the uh, former drummer now of Slipknot. He says, I'm definitely a fan that listened to only hip hop and was introduced to metal by Slipknot and will always be thankful and down for the ride. Uh, you know, Slipknot was absolutely one of the very best new metal bands, I guess, in the history of the genre. It's sort of coming back a little bit new metal, so we'll see where it goes in the future. But if you look at that initial wave of, of new metal, new metal is kind of the only scene that the only bands that were really great were the, the most well-known bands, the top bands of the new metal scene. Unlike a lot of scenes where like, you know, if you start to dig deeper from, uh, let's say grunge, you know, you, ju you just heard Nirvana, but then from there you start digging deeper and you say, oh shit, 
here's Pearl Jam, Soundgarden, Alice in Chains, shit like that. Oh, let's dig deeper than that. So on and so forth. So uh, new metal is one of the only scenes where it's like, okay, Corn, Deftones, Slipknot, uh, kind of Limp Biscuit. Some people consider Incubus a new metal band, but they're really just a band from that era. But yeah, once you start digging down from there, I mean, you get to like fucking just the most awful shit. I mean, from there you get into like crazy town and trapped and just like all the real trash of the new metal era. So, uh, so yeah, absolutely. A lot of fans were able to, to kind of make that crossover from being fans of hip hop to being fans of, uh, of Slipknot, which almost sounds like it rhymes, but it doesn't. So staying on the uh, on the Slipknot tip, uh, Craig Braunschweig says, I'm glad for Jay, though. Thank you, man. I mean, my Slipknot love comes from a different space, but good for you. Also, so long as you're right. Thank you, clown and great big mouth, which I don't I don't necessarily know what the fuck you're even saying, Craig. But I will say he was immediately hit with Samp. <laughs> I don't fucking know what that's even all about. My homie Flint says they peaked with Iowa, then they fired Joey, then I saw a live performance of Narrow Forte in which Corey sounded like he was singing in a jazz club, and I just stopped giving a fuck about them. Fast forward to CMFT, yeah, fuck them. I hope the rest of the band leaves too. Maybe Corey and Clown would figure out that they aren't the only members then. Couple of fucking tit wanks. This is actually a fairly common sentiment amongst the uh, Slipknot fan base. If you go back to around the time of Iowa, holy shit, the Slipknot fans were a tight ass fucking army. At this point, it's like, what the fuck ever, dude? Yeah, continuing with the Slipknot thing. Uh, Chris Briolt says, I love Joey, but with Jay, it wasn't his baby. So I felt his drumming parts weren't overpowering. I felt with Joey, his parts were loud and clear and not so much for Clown and Chris at the time. With Jay, I felt it was better equalized in sound. Joey Jordison, I've just never heard another drummer whose shit just like cuts through the way Jordison shit cut through. I, really every element of it from the fucking kicks all the way up to the fucking cymbals, like everything Jor Jordison did cut right the fuck through, which is why... Uh, his his drum sound was such a huge part of those early albums. It's a huge part of just the overall sound of Slipknot in the early days. And that's why it's been so hard for them to recapture it since they got rid of him. And uh, rest in peace, Joey Jordison. Next, James Green says, Jay was the perfect replacement for Joey. Who are they going to get now? This is insane. Yuri Gorgon Heavy... Heavy Metal Gaming says, nah, Jay is a poser and a nepotistic industry plan. You know, Jay, he's a lifelong Slipknot fan. And so it would make sense that he would play kind of in the style of Jordison, which he does. So in that way, he was a, a very, uh, a very good replacement for Jordison because he was able to play that style. So Slipknot could, could still be Slipknot. Because if you put just fucking like standard ass metal drumming in there, they just become another metal band. They might as well be Stone Sour or the, the CMFT bullshit. Next, Blue Eyed Zombie Kid says, I still find that Clown's role in the band is useless. And when you think in musician terms, easily expendable. And that was my thing. It's like, dude, who the fuck knew? That the fucking guy like fingering his mouth and fucking uh, bashing on beer kegs and shit like that. Who knew that was the most important motherfucker in the entire band. It's wild when you think about it. I will say though, he is the only one of his kind. He is the, uh, the absolute greatest uh, keg banger in all of heavy metal. He can say that. He can say he's the all time great. You have put him in the hall of fame right the fuck right now. Clown for hall of fame. Next, Brad Forward says, just another kiss raping. Get rid of the ones you don't need and get paid the same as you. Hire some less known bandmates and pay them a tenth of what you get paid. Sadly, this is this is the case. Because uh, I guarantee fucking you, Jay Weinberg didn't get the same cut as what Joey Jordison got, which, you know, he's not a founding member. So, of course, 
inevitably all the other band members band cuts go up i think for sure Corys and clowns though it would seem next razorback says they could be handing the business down to the kids many have felt that way Corey's kid sounds a lot like him i've seen that band live i've seen vended Corey's kids i don't know if he can sing like Corey, but i mean that's just classes god knows they could get that done i mean Corey could teach him my boy the mccretio mccretio mccreco whatever the fuck it's their band in the end it's just like another job when you're not needed anymore you're gone sadly in this case that was true jay weinberg he was he was just a hired dude uh, that's w- once you get past the original members i mean you're just a hired guy in the eyes of the original bandmates even if they love you at the end of the day you're still just a hired guy um next my boy secular spectator says slipknot died years ago just the kids keeping this abomination going next scott blanchard says man you are pandering lmao good luck what the fuck was i pandering to i don't get that and i have never fucked a panda once in my life and i require an apology i am not pander sexual i will not take this sass from you scott blanchard but no uh i I, what was i pandering to i don't fucking know was I maybe I'm kissing ass to the fans too much. I understand where the fans are coming from. I've had the perspective of seeing Slipknot all the way from, you know, Ozfest fucking 10 a.m. curtain jerker all the way through to being one of the biggest bands in the world. And uh, shit's changed. Shit's changed a lot. But, you know, that's how it goes. Anyways, next, my homie Sick Productions says expendable assets after all hope is gone i believe i lost track of them i don't keep up with them no more but yeah the clown and Corey run the band's money they fired two drummers now and it says it all fire the drummer and keep the clown that jumps on a keg and hits it from time to time if that ain't about the money then then it's about how many drummers can they fire you know as an update there is still no news on who is the new Slipknot drummer. That is a continuing story that we will get back to at some point, I assume. All right, next, uh, we got some feedback on our OzFest story. We were talking about uh, the Osborne's new podcast, and they were talking about why OzFest had to end and all that good shit. Uh, Speaking of Phil Anselmo, my homie user, whatever the fuck, says Phil Anselmo started dissing Slipknot after they started getting bigger During OzFest 2004, he stated, I see all you little pussies with your stupid Slipknot shirts on. We are down. If you don't like what I say, then come up here and fight me. What a jerk he was. If he was there with Down instead of Pantera, it's possible he would have been lower on the card. I don't even fucking know. Uh, But Phil was like that. Phil was on fucking opiates, man. He would just say random shit. That's why the whole Nazi thing, like I understand people would look... If you, if you don't have like all, if you're not privy to all the shit, you could look at what I'm saying and say, man, whatever the fuck, you're a stupid asshole. But just based on all I know, like th- this dude, he just does shit. Next, uh, my homie devil six, six, six said, well, I went to the last Oz fest at Donington. That's fucking cool. Next, uh, Philly Merck says my first Oz fest was Oh four in San Bernardino. Brutal AF funking it up. Says, I was there in 1999 to watch System of a Down, Slayer, Deftones, Black Sabbath, Slipknot, not even yet on the main stage, Primus, and lots of others. It was at the Dallas Starplex where Kerry King recorded the outro to pa- Pantera's goddamn electric backstage in the bathroom. Then the next year, Static X, X played right before Pantera, so I lit a massive joint I said to each person, I'll let you hit this joint to get in front of you. I peacefully moved from mid pit area to the front of the stage in a few minutes, got to watch the whole Pantera set there. A front row ticket for any big band is about 500 now. I paid 50 or 60 for all day at the OzFest. Man, that is true. The OzFest was was literally an all day event and it was all day packed with really good shit. Rarely were there like straight up stinkers coming out at the OzFest. Whoever curated it, I, I assume it wasn't 
It couldn't have been Sharon. But whoever curated that show did a great, great job. The OzFest was always packed. First and second stage, full of bands that at least were worth checking out for the spectacle. It was, there, there was entertainment, let's say, from like fucking 11 a.m. through to like 11 at night. And that's, I mean, who else can say that? The, the fucking OzFest, man. The world misses the OzFest. Bring it back! Next, Jim Bob Junction says Sharon was just as greedy as the managers. Sharon Osborne is well known for being a hard motherfucker when it comes to business. So, you know, you could say that. Uh, the Godhead says some of the wildest shit I've ever witnessed happened at OzFest. Uh, funking it up adds on to that. I saw a guy laying on the ground with two girls tending to him. As I got closer, I saw that his nipple ring had been ripped out in the pit, tearing off most of the flesh with it. It was at the side stage with a then unknown band called Slipknot. I saw Vinnie Paul about midday and wondered what he was doing there. I found out years later, Carrie King recorded the outro to Pantera's goddamn electric backstage. That was apparently a very fucking, uh... Uh, legendary show. Several people commenting about that one. Later in the night, Rob Zombie played before Black Sabbath. Something about the pyrotechnics triggered the audience. The crowd on the lawn began collecting all of the garbage and setting it on fire. Bonfires of plastic and styrofoam erupted everywhere as security frantically tried to put it out. Well, that weakened the line and the audience on the lawn charged the stage. I was a teenager not old enough to drive, loving every minute of it. I, when I went to OzFest in, uh, I don't know what fucking year it was, in Dallas, Pantera was the uh, the, the pre-Sabbath, pre ozzy band, which was essentially the headliner. Ozzy slash Sabbath was always going to be the headliner no matter what. But the band just below them was kind of like the de facto headliner. Anyways, it was Pantera in Dallas, Texas, so yes, we had the same situation where we gathered up all the fucking trash and we started gigantic trash fires out in the crowd. When the security came up to try to put that shit out, they were being fucking attacked. They, th those trash fires were protected and they burned long and fucking hot, baby. Because once the first guy gets knocked out, the fucking security is like, fuck that, man. I'm not, dude, let the fire burn, whatever. But, uh, but yeah, it, it, it was, it would get fucking wild at, at an OzFest show. You'd think that the crowd would lose power as the day went on, but no, no, every wave of fucking new people came in, re-energized everybody. By the end of the night, it was a goddamn fury. My, my girl, Monica Leterio says there was a free OzFest CD that came with my copy of Corn Follow the Leader. That CD introduced me to so many of my favorites. I miss the OzFest so much, just as I just said. I absolutely know what you're talking about because I got that same CD. Was it OzFest or was it... Um, I don't remember if it was specifically for the OzFest, but I know all the bands that were on it when I went to the OzFest. I remember listening to that CD so I would know who the fuck everybody was. So maybe it was. Maybe you're right. But uh, I remember that specific CD that had like early Incubus on it. It had Deftones on it, right? I believe it had uh, Limp Biscuit on it, Corn. It had like all the fucking greatest shit that uh, was playing at the Ozfest at the time was on that CD. Absolutely, several people gave it uh, gave it a thumb and. So I think a lot of people love that CD. And I'm gonna go ahead and end on that note. Like I said, next next episode we're gonna have probably even more listener comments. But uh, anyways, thank you guys so much for sending your shit in. Info at killrockradio.com is where you can email us or just get at us through all our social media channels. Uh, thank you very much. Before I go, I would like to uh, give a shout out to our homies at Amazon Music, where right now, if you go to getamazonmusic.com slash killrockradio, that's getamazonmusic.com slash killrockradio, all lowercase, no spaces. Right now, you can get three months free. This is a limited time only offer, so you gotta move right the fuck right now. So for three months, you could get unlimited access to Amazon Music featuring on-demand ad-free jams, the most ad-free top podcasts. You can listen offline with unlimited skips. 
and experience the HD and spatial audio difference. Once again, go to getamazonmusic.com slash killrockradio and get three months free. If you want to keep it all going after the three months, you can keep it all going for a low monthly fee. But until then, you're kicking ass unlimited for free. Getamazonmusic.com slash killrockradio. Thank you very much, Amazon Music. Thank you, the Kill Rock Radio audience, for listening. We will keep this conversation going next time. Until then, I will talk to you crazy motherfuckers later. Peace. Got any questions or comments? Send them to info at killrockradio.com. To keep up with the latest and catch up on past interviews and clips, Search Kill Rock Radio on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Subscribe to Kill Rock Radio wherever you listen to podcasts. I'm like, oh my god, just listen to it already. Wherever you listen to podcasts.